Everybody, welcome to the Arkansas Diamond Report with Dudley Dawson. I'm Jason. Thank you guys for uh, jumping on with us today. It is April 12th, 2024. We've had quite a few significant movements uh, within the university's athletic department over the last, oh, I would say, 72 hours. And we'll get to a little bit of that. And uh, we're going to talk more, a lot more baseball. we got Arkansas heading down to Tuscaloosa to take on the Crimson Tide. And the Vogel Bombers, Bombers are heading to South Carolina to take on the number 25 uh, ranked Gamecocks this weekend. And we got a little bit of uh, scrimmage news as far as uh, tomorrow's red white game. And so I want to bring on Dudley and let's get this thing going. First Dudley, of all, how's it I'm, going? Good. First of all, I'm excited about the fact that uh, uh, the first football game of the year is going to be on uh, Thursday. Uh, Instead of Saturday, that's also some news that came out this morning that the UAPB mm -hmm. game in Little Rock will be moved up. I think that's good for me, seeing as how my birthday's on August 30th. Uh, I can celebrate it here at home. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll enjoy that. But uh, lots, as you said, lots going on here right now. Number one thing, of course, uh, for the baseball and softball teams are road trips this weekend. Yep. The uh, softball team has won nine straight SEC road trips. I mean, that's just amazing considering what the level of competition is and then you've got the number one baseball team in the country who uh, you know has not lost at home in almost two months has only lost one game uh out of its last i mean it's a 10 game winning streak they, they uh lost the, the rubber match at uh, auburn when a couple of youngsters came in or pitching and kind of got in, in tough situations but that's really been one of the only bad innings they've had this year so as you said, and, and I understand they hired a new basketball coach as well. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. I think it made a, not only local, regional, but I think national news. And it's been plastered everywhere. It really has. It it really kind of dwarfed the uh, women's national championship. By the way, they pretty much boat raced the men's national champ, actually the men's final four this year, and quite deservedly too, because honestly, we talked about this before, their product is a lot better. This, this time around, really, than the guys were. Well, it was personality driven. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously, uh, great players, great teams. You had arguably the, the best player in the country going up against the best team, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I would just, they, they gave it everything they had, just didn't have enough to get past the South Carolina team that, uh, you know, stuck Raven Johnson on uh, Caitlin Clark there late and didn't stop her, but certainly slowed her down from the 18 points yep. she got in the first quarter. It did. It did. You know, you had Kentucky, or uh, sorry, Kentucky there, by the way, I think that they're floating down the river about this point and being uh, paddled along by the near their new head coach, Mark Pope. But, uh, you know, you have the Razorbacks making the national news. You had Connecticut going back to back the first time since the 2006, 2000 season, seven season where the Gators repeated as national champions. And before that was the Razorbacks going back to back to the championship game, but not completing the task, unfortunately. But you've got, uh, you know, Arkansas now is going to be competing at a high level for recruits. And that that's something that we're, we're going to talk about too here in just a little bit. But, uh, you know, Arkansas had a great, you know, great two games set against San, uh, San Jose State. They... I felt like they didn't have the bats that they might have needed to have as far as having a big victory because, let's, let's face it, San Jose, they played them tough. And mm -hmm. they come out and they wanted to take the number one team in the nation to task. And they really they really gave them a, a good fight. Yeah, and, and their coach, uh, uh, Coach Brad Sanfilippo, uh, knew what his team was getting itself into, but he thought this would be great for them. They know they're not going to be hosting a regional. Uh, San Jose State, that is, that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And they know that they had to come and get some games on the road in great atmospheres. So this will help them down the line. Uh, obviously, they had one young man who hit two home runs, <laughs> knocked in all three runs that they scored. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing I saw coming out of that game, and you're right, they did leave a lot of people on base and could have put more runs up, something that uh, Coach Van Horn noted, was the midweek pitching was just dominant. And... Uh, mm -hmm. This was a team in San Jose State that had won four games in a row coming in. 
but Colin Fisher and everybody else, I mean, it seemed like 15 guys went out there in those two games. And, mm-hmm. uh, that's just slightly uh, hyperbolic, uh, you know, because there, there was a lot of guys that, that pitched. The, and I think that, you know, that was probably the biggest focus uh, that I had coming out of this two-week series was how well those guys pitched and how it just continues to extend the length of the bullpen. And you and I talk about the algorithm he gets to use. Uh, it just if somebody else has an injury or somebody else isn't doing well, he's got plenty to go down there. It's almost a, uh, you know, these, these – uh, this week and next week, you have both five game seats, and that's probably good to get to get some of these guys work. They used ten pitchers over the the two games set with San Jose State, and like you're alluding to, they're, they're, he's trying to get more arms or arms as much time under their belt as many innings as they can leading into June, and it it's really going to help. Honestly, it's helping. You know, with the starters, you you look at Ben Bybee. You also look at Colin Fisher. These are two guys that you're going to have to depend on when they're, like you said, if, you know, God forbid something happened to, you know, one of the three starting pitchers, you have two other guys in, in tow that you can use and plug and play. But whenever you get into a, a fifth game in a regional or if, you know, if it's a tight pinch in a super regional or even at the SEC tournament or hell this weekend, you've got guys that you can plug in and play and feel confident about because you, Dave's already seen what he needs to see from these guys. And that's where you have this, where these midweek games come into play. Yeah. Looking forward to finding out uh, just how Hunter Dietz is. Uh, they were going to do some uh, tests on him after Wednesday's game. I hadn't heard to this point uh, if that's something serious, something minor. If you, made the 27-man roster. Uh, you know, you always look at pitchers that they send out to see if guys are with them. But I couldn't tell in the pitchers that they sent out. So we'll, I'm sure we'll yeah. get word on that uh, tonight at 6 uh, on SEC Network Plus. Uh, and uh, it may not, you know, it may be one of those situations, you, you know, just like we were talking about, you got in a pitching, you probably, even if it's a minor injury, you probably let him just uh, stay here, get some rehab and rest up. Yep, because – at this point, being the middle of April, th- this is honestly the best time for something to that to happen, if that's going to happen, because you don't want that happening in the first middle part of May, because then at that point, you're starting to move some chess pieces around that you may not want to move. And so that's, that's – it's, I hope nothing is wrong long-term with him. It's something that, like you said, you can stay the weekend, rehab, and keep moving forward. They thought but, it was some minor something that he was just sore, but the last thing that uh... – that was reported as minor was played in Stovall saying he was fine. And then he had a broken, you know, broken bone. Yeah. In his foot. And so, uh, you know, we'll hold off on speculating. Yeah. I don't want to do that. And, you know, you, you talked about leaving runners on base, Arkansas left 22 runners on base over the two games set against San Jose state. Uh, was it just the, was it the concentration at the plate against a, a lesser opponent in San Jose state was it the weather? Because let's let's face it, the weather was kind of crappy those two days for sure. Wednesday, and was it was it more weather related? Was it more focus related? Did did they talk a little bit about that after the games? Yeah, I think it was a, a combination of all those factors. Uh, you certainly could have gotten uh, a few more hits. You would have liked to your, your guys who are normally in the lineup certainly get their hits at the top. Uh, you know, you had some of the guys in the middle of the order uh, who had, you know, good at bats, uh, maybe not as consistent at bats over the two games as you might get in a weekend mm-hmm. series. You do have to give them a lot of credit. I think they are five and zero now in these midweek games, uh, and the, the pitching has just been dominant in that. Uh, there's a lot of things. You know, you were able to, to set a couple of guys, get them some rest. You were able to, to get a few reserves in there, or guys that would be starters on the other teams that are reserves mm-hmm. on this team. Uh, and get them some work. All in all, I think it was good that they came out of here, but you can always go back and nitpick, you know, and I, I know that, uh, uh, you know, there are certain things that uh, Coach Van Horn would like to be better. And he says, wait till we really get going. And this is from a guy whose team is uh, 29 and 3, 11 and 1, uh, you know, has, uh, has had incredible pitching. As you said, he has had some good at bats, but also left some people on base. So they're not fully clicking 
yet. And that's just, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal when you take into account that they are now just four wins away from the longest home winning streak in program history. Now we've been reporting that how long it is. It's a record at, at uh, Ballmarker Stadium. Mm -hmm. But back to the 1988-89 uh, George Cole Field days, there was a, oh, yeah. a, a 27 game home winning streak that uh, went over two seasons. So it's uh, one of those things that uh, uh, you know, we'll see how they continue. It. Uh, got uh, Florida. Uh, we got another road trip next weekend and then got Florida coming in here where you could tie that, I guess, or, or get close to it to tie it. Because you, yep. you, know, you I guess you could break it. You won both midweek games next week, then you could break it against Florida, who, as we know, has one of the, the better players in, in college baseball this year. And Jack mm -hmm. Leone, he uh, is yep. going to be a uh, maybe the number one draft pick, if certainly a top five. One. Yeah, you, you talk about those midweek games. You got Texas Tech came in, coming in here next week. That's that's a huge matchup. That, that, I mean, Texas Tech's solid every year. And then you, in a couple of weeks after that, you've got Missouri State. So it, it's not like Arkansas has got some slouches coming in here that they can just ring up a couple of wins and move on from. These, these are guys, these are opponents that are going to see regionals possibly, super regionals that have the, the history of having great baseball teams. So he, he's really stacking this line, this uh, the lineup opponents to where – they're going to be battle tested here in the next couple of weeks. That's going to really help them later on down the line. Yeah, it was just two years ago that uh, uh, you know there were many critics of Arkansas's uh, RPI, their, their non-conference schedule. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. people thought that was one of the reasons that uh, they didn't get into hosting a regional and had to go to, to Oklahoma State. Although it ended up, I think, galvanizing that team over in Oklahoma State, <laughs> yeah, they they North North Carolina, uh, and. Uh, you look at that situation. I think, as I said, it kind of brought the team together. Uh, you can't really, you can't really say that this year in, in terms of uh, RPI and all that. They've played a great schedule. They've won. It was always my contention that if they'd have won the games that uh, they had on the schedule, more of them than they still would have posted. Uh, and, and you know, but, but who knows? Maybe they needed to go on the road to get to the College World Series. And that certainly is the goal this year. Uh, slate is clean at the Dawson household for June because we think that uh, uh, dad here, hubby here is going to be covering a lot of games. I was going to say between uh, them, and I think this is a great segue too, honestly, with them and also the Bogle Bombers who uh, secured a huge series victory on Monday against the Missouri Tigers. When it comes down to it, at the end of the season and the NCAA committee has some questions that they need to have answered. I, and you, you alluded to this, this is a series that they're going to go back and they're going to look at and say, okay, this is, this is going to help us determine you know, where Arkansas could go or where Missouri is going to go or who's going to be coming in to an Arkansas regional. And that was a huge, huge, huge series victory on Monday night for them. Every win is precious, but especially against comparable teams that you know are going, as you said, be bidding uh, to be hosting regionals, uh, mm -hmm. you know, putting themselves in great positions to get to Oklahoma City, which is the goal of, of all softball teams to get to the Women's College World Series. Uh, I just think that was a huge win on Monday, as you said, for them. And, and uh, the previous Monday, obviously, was the, uh, the Georgia game when uh, Hannah, Hannah Gamble called game. Uh, after uh, you know, getting a grand slam, after they had it, it, uh, you know, eked out a couple of runs there to, to get ahead, and then she kind of finished it off. Uh, but I just think that was you know, some games are more important than the others. So you, won't hear, you probably won't hear coaches say that, but you'll certainly hear writers say that and, and observers of baseball and softball. Uh, and in terms of your postseason hopes, uh, it always helps to beat those who you, you know, could be on the same line you're on on the NCAA tournament bracket. Yeah, and you know that Monday night game. You know, Kylie Halverson and uh, Hannah Gamble both combined to go uh, four for six, three RBIs, scored a run, and uh, you know that those are two key components in the middle of that lineup that you have to keep going through the the middle part of this season. That's going to help carry the team towards the end, and you know. 
Reagan Kramer, Reagan Johnson, they, they, it seemed like kind of sputtering here a little bit there, here and there. But whenever you've got Kylie and Hannah keeping that order solidified, that that's really huge. Something similar to, uh, that about Reagan Johnson and myself is we both like to wear sunglasses and neither one of us has been thrown out on the bases in the last two years. Now, I haven't attempted any skills, but she's attempted the 30 plus and, and has just been, you know, great for that, to, you know, to, to kick off that lineup. As we talked with Coach Dyke at the start of the year, you know, we were saying one to nine, one to 10, one to 13 uh, in terms of uh, the batters and the length of that lineup. And I think that, that there were some times this year where everybody wasn't clicking and uh, it wasn't yeah. going one to nine, but uh, Kennedy Miller coming on as a freshman and, and putting herself in the middle of that lineup. And, and then you've got uh, some uh, players who you thought would bat higher. Now they're batting lower and coming up with big hits. It's an awful, uh, it's an awful uh, basket of riches, I guess, that uh, wealth of riches to, to, to have those. And uh, I think something that's overlooked because we don't call them the Vogel defenders is the defense has been great this year. And you mentioned Kylie, Kylie, you know, being the, uh, you know, moving in position and playing second base has, has done some phenomenal work there. And there haven't been many games where Arkansas has uh, defensively uh, had an issue. Yep. And uh, we're going to talk about Morgan Linestock, the SEC pitcher of the week, who has come. Yep along with the injuries they've had, it just solidified herself as the ace. And that's that's even, you know, especially since Robin Heron, who's done a perfect game, uh, has had has had to battle through injuries and get back and, you know, I guess a little pitch mm-hmm. count last weekend. So, you know, they, they look to be in good shape, but uh, they're going this weekend to South Carolina. It's a team that started off hot, has great pitching of its own, uh, is 4-8 in conference play, but have played two of the top uh, five teams in the conference on the road and uh, been swept. Uh, the, you know, you, you take that out of account and, you, and, you know, I'm sure they wish you could. They're four and two, you know, and won their other two series. Yeah, and uh, Nia Carter finally got – she got her first home run in Bogle Park. Uh, Sheer joy. And that, that, that – you could see the relief just melt away from her when she finally got into the dugout because it, it was like this huge load had been lifted off of her shoulders and she's like, finally – I got my first 140 one. or so hits the, the last two years for her. And, and uh, you know, I had 102, I think it was, last season to finish uh, first in the Big Ten and second in the country overall. But none of those left the yard. So I know it's a, it was a thrill for her to see one, you know, leave the yard. And it was, it was a key, key hit, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. you know, them going back to back. Yep, her and Kylie both going back to back, taking that lead against Missouri after they had jumped up to a 1-0 lead. And – you finally, you kind of feel like once a couple, in, in you and as well as I know both, that hitting's contagious. Baseball, softball, it doesn't matter. Once somebody gets gets a couple, you know, gets a hit, and then the next one gets a hit, all of a sudden things kind of loosen up. And I, I, I definitely, I see this happening for this team for sure with this weekend because. Once they finally can get a couple under their belt, man, I'm going to tell you what, they're going to take off. Yeah, one of my favorite old baseball sayings is there's a fight at the bat rack. That's what you say when everybody's getting hit, everybody wants to get to the plate. They're all getting up there trying to get on deck, get to the plate. Yeah. Fight at the bat rack, uh, you know, you you have to have that during the season. You've got to have continued offense, and then you got to have timely offense. There wasn't a lot of offense last uh, season. Sunday, Monday, the day's going to run together for me. But uh, those were two <laughs> yeah. key hits. And right after, uh, you know, Missouri had, had uh, scored a run and looked like they wanted to take momentum. And they haven't had a great pitcher. And then they got to her. Yep. So, Saturday, tomorrow, 12 o'clock, Razorback Football Stadium. You have got the annual spring red-white scrimmage. You've got ones who are going to be taking on ones and then also ones taking on the team in the second half. If, you know, We're going to see a lot of the first half. We're going to see a lot of the ones run. And then after halftime, you're going to see a lot of the second, third string, fourth string guys come in. Uh, you got Taylor Green. He, he's he's taking the job. He's the number one guy under center now. And, you know, 
I, I want to see what the wide receivers do in the spring the spring game. I, I think it's critical that they get a lot of reps, quality reps, catch the ball and be able to uh, you know rack up some yards after contact because we didn't see that last year. Yeah, and uh, I know that a lot of people will be seeing their first action uh, this season. You know, a lot of people making the trip up. It also is, in, you know, they're honoring the life of Dean Weber, a truck and car show, and just a lot of other things going on uh, uh, that's going to make it a festive day. Uh, I, myself, actually won't be there. I'm going to be doing the 1030 uh, Razorback softball game, and then, uh, which is, you know, out on the road, and then I'm going to be here and doing the press conferences. Uh, via Zoom, and then, uh, uh, you know, we have baseball coming pretty soon after that. So busy day for all of us. I know the entire yep. crew is uh, is going to be uh, working on stories and getting stuff out there. And then uh, poor Kevin, uh, you know, he's got 13 scholarships to, to uh, write about all when them. they come on. So he's been a busy guy, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. you got to give him a lot of credit for, uh, you know, putting in the work. Yep. And yeah, because let, let's face it, Calipari, the splash that he's made so far for the university. And I, and this is kind of something that I thought, you know, that press conference and that pomp and circumstance that happened Wednesday night was worth an $8 million coach. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was everything that I thought it would be and more. I love the stories that Cal shared. Uh, I felt like he, he was a good fit. I didn't realize that there were so many tie-ins that he had to the university and that have culminated over the years. And now you, you've got a guy that has such a high level of recruiting. Now you couple that with the money that he has with NIL. I'm going to tell you what, this thing could really take off. The man can, can command a room and it's whether it's uh, you know a living room where he's recruiting uh, the young man and, and the family, uh, or, you know, an arena that I guess had 7,000 or so people there the other night. Uh, uh, I, you know, you, you've all, I've always been impressed with, uh, uh, you know, his coaching ability, what he's done. Yeah. I know that the last, you know, several years, they haven't been, hadn't had success in the tournament, but he didn't forget how to coach. Uh, I think he got it caught up a little bit in, uh, the rosters being too young uh, and, uh, you know, getting people to the NBA more than uh, a bit of the team. But he seems very invigorated, uh, as you you and I were talking before this. Uh, and, you know, Kevin, Kevin will have lots of reports on it. There's some great players scheduled to, to come in here and see uh, the yeah. campus. And uh, this roster will fill up pretty quickly, I'm sure. Uh, talking with the uh, uh, little segue as you say uh talking with the mike neighbors yesterday uh, he's obviously mm -hmm. doing the same thing got some uh, some kids coming in uh the national signing late national signing period opens next wednesday uh so they'll, they'll have some stuff going in but it's a lot of uh, there's a lot of excitement on this campus and a lot of it has to do to to just be honest about it with someone the caliber of uh John Calipari. I, I have to slow it down when you know, my, my wife tells me to slow it down when I'm, when I'm saying this night because I'm so used to saying it another way. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of excitement on campus. That's going to feed over to the other programs. And, uh, yeah. it, you know, it's it's uh, suddenly this campus and this area is invigorated in a way that it certainly hasn't been since, I want to say, mid-season, mid-football season last year. Yep. Yeah, and I want to talk about this for just a second too. And, and I'll be the I'll be the one of the first ones, and I'm going to eat crow on this, and I'm going to be on the air here, eating it live. I had not a lot of faith in Hunter Yurichek at the moment. You saw how everything had transpired with football. You saw the way the basketball was going. You saw how the end of basketball happened. And he turns around and he hires Bobby Petrino. Gives the, the football room a, a boost in the arm that it really needed. You wanted to see what version of Bobby we were going to get. And it looks like we're getting the best version of Bobby at this point. And then 
you start to hear the rumor mill with last weekend with the, the coaching search. And you, you knew that you heard the, the, the rumors of that he might have a, a big fish in, in, in the, on the hook possibly that not a lot of people knew about yet. I didn't believe that it was going to happen. And when I saw John Vincent Calipari, Calipari's name on that the, the video board, it finally hit me. I thought, crap. Hunter is really pulling this off. And he has done a, a 180, really, because you, you felt like there might have been a little bit of distrust with the fan base because how things have went. But now he's went from the outhouse back to the penthouse with this entire fan base, with this entire state. He's reinvigorated not only the, the camaraderie, he's reinvigorated the bank account. And that's yeah. huge. One of the one of the, the few things that uh, the new Razorback head basketball coach and I have in common uh, uh, is that we are both friends of John Tyson. <laughs> He's worked out well for both of us. And I was talking with uh, John yesterday, uh, and he made a point that, that that I think is very salient in that this has worked out for everybody. There was a a, a specific group of Kentucky fans who wanted to get somebody new. They thought that they would just, you know, Scott Drew or, or uh, Billy Donovan, for that matter. Donovan, somebody would just run up there, and they're going to end up with uh, with uh, Mr. Mark Pope, who may turn out to be a great coach. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I read this morning where uh, the uh, they, there was a person up in uh, Kentucky now who's donating four million to the to the NIL. I find it interesting that uh, you know that uh, uh, these people are now finding money to donate. It's all about the excitement level and they see Mark yeah. Pope as one of those. I don't you know, I don't wish him ill will. I, I thought that it would be a little bit higher, but they've got a guy that's one of their guys now. And Arkansas, mm -hmm. you know, has their guy. And you yep. know, I'll go back and, and coach Muss is is you know back in California. So these were things that uh, that John and I talked about yesterday. Seems to me like everybody's one except the possibility of Rob Lanier who was fired at SMU after two years and got this ball rolling. Uh, yeah. whoever, whoever made that decision at SMU, we probably should should thank him. All these other colleges should thank him for for getting things rolling and the people ending up in the spots that, that they are. Uh, it's so you never know what's going to happen, you know, uh, in, in college athletics and especially now that it's such a business as, as we spend more time talking about the NIL and portal as we do defenses and offenses and special teams and all that. Uh, it's uh, it's really uh, really one of the things that uh, you know is is an, I think there's an exciting level around here. Leslie, the uh, Kevin is we we have Kevin buried in a hole somewhere. Uh, you know, <laughs> on that, uh, and I know he'll yeah. have. I know he's had some reports uh, on Hogville. I know he's going to have some more. But to be honest, I, I have kind of stayed out of that. Uh, and just focused on baseball and softball and, and uh, women's sports. And uh, Otis is buried up in football. But Kevin will have those reports. He's really good at what he does. And, yep. uh, you know, the uh, certainly puts in the time and gets out the info. Uh, so I would uh, – it's, it's what I've been telling. I used to do a lot of basketball, and I've had people just calling me and all that. And I, I've had to tell them I'm just not, I'm just not into basketball anymore because, of the, you know, yep. the Abilities I've had, it. and if you want to know something, just go to the the Hogville board. Kevin puts up an um, un, ungodly amount of words, uh, and uh, the uh, so that very detailed. Yeah, and he and he, and he you know, if you have Twitter, obviously he or X, or whatever we call it these days, uh, Instagram, what did what a candygram, whatever. Coach Cal <laughs> uh, the uh, certainly he'll he'll keep us up to date, and I do know. That after uh, going to uh, get an award yesterday, that uh, Coach Cal is now here, and uh, there will be there will be many recruits coming in quickly. Yeah, make sure uh, if you like and subscribe to the few people. There are only slightly more people in Kentucky right now than there are here, which is you know interesting. There's going to be a they're, lot they're, of free agent frenzy. <laughs> There for a while, it, it felt like Lawson Blake was uh, was you know I am legending it for a little bit, but uh, now there's the team. There's the team. 
Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But you know, I, I think he's going to get a group of friends pretty quick that are going to. He's going to be able to be a friend here on campus. You know, make sure to go on and like and subscribe to our YouTube page here on Hogville.net. Anytime we go live, you'll be able to get a notification on your phone if it's myself and Dudley, myself and Otis, or if it's Kevin. Anytime any of us go live, you'll be able to uh, pull that up. So make sure to like and subscribe to the page. You can see all of Kevin, Dudley, and Otis's interviews on Pig Trail Nation on Hogville and the Picture Web uh, Nation website as well. And like uh, Dudley said, go to the boards and you can read all of the stories that myself, Drake, Jerry, Dudley, Otis, and Kevin. John, and John does a great job with pictures for us, obviously. Yep. As, as we, as we uh, talk privately, uh, and I'll say publicly anytime, this is a great little team we have here. Uh, yes. Lots of experience. Uh, on, on here and uh you know we we love what we do and when you love what you do it's not a job it is it really is it's not a job at all and that's that's the reason why i think that when we all work together like this it, it flows so easily because it isn't it's just something we love to do and so i want to thank everybody for joining us again well, by the way, back I, one, I, I wanted i did not do great in some bracket contest but i won Oh, Deeks Big Whiskey. Uh, nice contest. One hundred and fifty dollar uh, gift certificate to Big Wix, Big Whiskey. So guess who's gonna get? Uh, guess who's gonna get a date meal at Big Whiskey sometimes? That would be Petra. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so tonight, Razorback South Carolina softball, five p.m. SEC Network Plus, Arkansas and Alabama. They will be taking. Uh, they will be getting after it tonight at six p.m tonight on sec network plus noon tomorrow you've got the arkansas razorback red white game so make sure like i said subscribe and like all of our uh, content so that way you can get the most up-to-date uh, information shows stories anything from us at all and make sure to follow us on twitter as well well dudley that was a lot my man my man we're gonna get out of here and you have a great weekend and we'll see you next friday you too all right, everybody, y'all take care and go hogs.